I, I first and foremost, I want to send my prayers to the family members of the officers who passed. I want to say thank you to the officers who were there for me and my son, who watched over us during that, uh, that time. I just want to say thank you. I'm sorry. And um, they were really heroes for us. They saved my life. They saved my son's life. All of them. And I want to say thank you to them, first and foremost. Well, with everything, and, and not just the two recent incidents um, from the Alton or the, the field in Louisiana and Minnesota, but just everything before and even the things that have not been televised. You know, there's been incidences all around the world that have not even been televised that being a mother of four young black men, five young black men, uh, I sat down with my kids when I came home from work on Thursday and we talked about everything and I, I talked to them about how they needed to comply if for whatever reason they were ever stopped by the police, you know, comply, be respectful of self, of them, answer questions and, and or either just you know tell them your name your age and to contact your parent you know you need to contact my mother that's what I was telling them and it just so happens that a, a post came on Facebook about a meeting at the park downtown I'm not real familiar with downtown Dallas but um, I googled it and I asked the boys if they wanted to go and they all say yeah let's go and I want to show them that we can be unified you know, that there could be a peaceful march. And we were there, and it was really nice. It was very peaceful. It was very informative. The kids had a good time. They were, you know, my 12-year-olds, like, oh, I'm making history. I get to march, you know. And um, like I said, I'm not real familiar with Dallas, but we marched around, and we were just coming back down, and I believe they were on the stairs of the courthouse. I think that's what it was. And be it that I had to be to work at 7 o'clock in the morning, and the crowd was kind of big I told the boys you know let's go before the traffic gets too much and um, as we were walking back it was really just me and my boys everybody was still headed in the direction of the rally and we were walking up Maine I believe it was I can't really I'm not entirely sure what that cross street is that we were on at the corner but um the officers had had the street blocked off. And uh, we were standing on the corner getting ready to cross the street to go up to where my car was parked. And uh, we heard a shot. And we all looked. We didn't know what it was, you know, like, because it's so close to the 4th of July. And we all kind of looked, and uh, it was a pause, and there was a second shot. And the police officer, I saw him, kind of tall, hefty, white guy, bald. I remember seeing him. And uh, that second shot, he kind of, as he was going down, he said he has a gun. Run. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He, um, he said he has a gun. He has a gun, run. And my kids started running. And I started, I wanted to make sure that they were all in front of me, so they started running up the block. And I was running behind them. And uh, I felt the bullet. I don't know if it bounced off the ground or what, but I felt it when it hit me in the back of my leg. And uh, my son, Andrew, had turned around to grab me because he didn't I guess he turned around to see where I was and he went to grab me but I had already been shot so I grabbed tackled him and uh, pushed him into the street and I think he hit the car and we ended up in between the car and the curb and I just laid on top of him and uh, police officers just started coming up the block and one of them I heard him when he said, is anybody hit? My son said no, because he didn't know I was shot. And I was saying yes, but I wasn't saying it loud enough so my son could hear me, because I didn't want him to hear me. And the officer said it again, kind of loud, and I said, yes, sir, I'm, I'm hitting my leg. And, and the other officer jumped on top of me, 
and covered me and my son. And there was another one at the at our feet, and there was another one over our head, and there was several of them lined against the wall over there, and they just they stayed there with us. And I saw another officer. I saw another officer get shot right there in front of me again. That was two. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I don't know if the shooter moved, but they were able to get us up get me up, help me to get me up, and uh, put me in the back of the police car. And, uh, another officer was in the back of the car, and my son. And um, <laughs> that bullet, that car was riddled with bullets. I'm thankful that that officer didn't get hit as he was driving us. My son, as far as I know, it's like when we pulled into the hospital, it was a uh, car the police car came in on rims only. <laughs> um, the whole time I just kept praying because I got separated from my, my other three. I remember seeing Kavion as I was laying on the ground on top of Andrew. I remember seeing Kavion snatch my youngest one, like really snatched him and pulled him into the garage, but the door was down on the garage, that gate was down, so they just were standing up against it. I couldn't find Juwan. He had just taken off. But I just prayed the whole time. I was on the ground with Andrew in that car, back in the, in the, on the ground in the front of the hospital. Because they pulled me out the car and they had to lay me on the ground there because there was an gurney available. And there was another officer. I think it was the officer that had gotten shot in front of me. He was on a gurney headed into the hospital. And they got one, and I was still praying. And I was still praying in the in the hallway into the room just kept praying for everybody for my sons to be safe for the officers to be safe because it was it was i had never been in a situation like that before it was hundreds of rounds just i had never heard anything like that before it was shots all all around us but I'm thankful. I'm so thankful for the Dallas Police Department and the whoever else, ATF, I don't know who was down there, but I'm thankful for all of them because they, they had no regard for their own life. They stayed there with us. They surrounded my son and I. And I'm so thankful for that because all I could do was just lay on top of him and just pray. Even though, I, I mean, I knew I was, I knew I was gonna be okay. I knew I was. Like, I just got shot in the leg, it might not be that bad. <laughs> but it was a little worse than I thought. Um, but I'm, I am, I'm, I'm sorry that it happened. I'm sorry that that person thought that that would be okay. That he thought it would, or that it would solve something. I'm sorry that, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that they lost their lives. But I'm thankful. I'm so thankful. And Andrew came to the emergency when I was in the, down in the emergency room. He came to the doors and he was like, they found all three of them. And they are all okay. Ooh, and just the praise, just the glow, oh, just the praise I gave to God just for everything. Because I didn't stop praying. Never stopped praying throughout the whole everything. But just to know that they were, when I found out that they were okay, that took a lot. Oh, that took a lot of a lot of worry off of me. But while I was in that room, I was in that room, I saw an officer tell another officer that one officer didn't make it. And it was like I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating my kids.
sorry. I feel like I'm celebrating my kids being alive. And I'm listening to them telling each other how officer didn't make them. Sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. It just it hurt, you know. It hurt. Of course I'm I'm thankful that my babies are okay. But somebody's bad. This is my husband is. I'm just thinking, thinking back on it. It just it hurts. It really does. I'm, I'm frustrated. I'm angry. Why would he do that? I know, I know the first one. I know the first one, cause he just stood out. You know, he's a big guy, and he just stood out. And I saw him, but I saw him, I saw him go down. I saw him when he got hit, and he slumped over. And as he was slumping over, he said he has a good run. I don't think he made it. I don't think he made it. Thank you. God bless you. And just thank you for setting yourself aside and, 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 and we're in covering us. So I just thank you, and God bless you. Thank you so much. Oh, yes, just thank you for this. The, you just, they just set them, just, just thank you. Yeah, for setting yourself aside and just, you know, being heroes. I didn't do anything that any other mother, father would have done for their own child. What are we going to do if the police just like, you know, I'm done? What are we going to do if they stop? Police, what are we going to do? What if they just decide we're going to boycott? Who are you going to call? It was very frightening, but just like my mother said, we still have admiration for the police. We understand that the incidents that happened across the country, you know, in the past weeks and over the past few years are like, they're isolated incidents. And just seeing how the police reacted while we were out there and they began shooting. In fact, me and my younger brother were behind, um, the stone column for the parking garage and we were just crouching there it was just he and I and a couple of um, reporters trying to get pictures or whatever and then a police officer ran up to us and said go I'll cover you and that's just like wow because you're in that situation where it's like really chaotic there's a lot of calamity nobody knows what's really going on but he was really selfless and he put himself in harm's way in order to protect him to protect us so we understand that there are a few bad apples out there, but they don't spoil the whole bunch. Like my mom had said, we're on the corner, and we had came to the courthouse, and we were walking back, and uh, we just heard the gunshots, and I was pretty panicked because I had never heard gunshots, only heard gunshots in like video games and stuff. So you know me as a 12-year-old, I've never heard a gunshot or even seen a real gun. So I was crying because really I would, we had all got split up. And I was just praying for my brothers and my mom to make sure that everybody was okay. And my older brother, he had snatched me and we had hid behind the brick wall. And uh, the media reporters had came and they were kind of surrounding us. And after like a couple minutes, the cops had came and told us to run through the garage place. And uh, we had ran. I was like, like I said, I was scared. It really didn't know what was gonna happen.